If we are to understand scripture, there are some obvious barriers that we will need to overcome. I'll just list the four major ones for us. There's language, of course, culture, history, and geography. So let's look at uh, each of these uh, briefly in order. First, uh, to understand scripture, clearly there's a language barrier that we have to overcome. None of us speak ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, or Hellenistic Greek. Uh, so to, to begin with, when we encounter our English Bibles or whatever language we're speaking, uh, we've, we've uh, uh, relied on people to cast the ancient text in languages that we can read. And, and this has been true right from, from in fact, the Old Testament. Here, here is a, a text from Nehemiah 8, 7 to 8. The Levites read from the book of the law, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. By the time Nehemiah was written, the Israelites could no longer understand their ancestral language, Hebrew. They needed translations into Aramaic. You can't understand what someone has written if you don't understand their language. So if I read a Greek sentence at this point, probably most of you would say, it's all Greek to me. So we need to overcome the language barrier. And, and scholars helpfully have done that for us. So we have many different versions uh, in our own languages so that we can apprehend, begin to apprehend the meaning of, of, of scripture. In this course, we will presume, of course, that uh, you have access to one or more English translations. Yet even with good translations, we will encounter words translated in different ways in our versions. What did the writers mean by the words they used in their original Aramaic, Hebrew, or Greek languages? Uh, what does shalom really mean, and how's the best way to capture that in, in English? Or, or the uh, uh, Greek word agape. Uh, we hear bantied about in different uh, ideas about what these key terms are, but uh, are we sure what they mean in each different place? So we need to do word studies. Then there's a cultural barrier to overcome. We live in a very different world than the ancient Hebrews or the people of the Roman Empire in Jesus and Paul's era. So if you uh, read the story of Jesus' miracle at Cana in Galilee, uh, you will read these words in John 2. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. And you might say, what is ceremonial washing? There's a cultural practice that may be unfamiliar to Christians who read the Gospels. We need to overcome our misunderstanding or our total lack of understanding of what ceremonial washing is. Or when we come to that famous story of Jesus uh, at the well with the Samaritan woman, uh, we read uh, these words in John 4, uh, verse 9. You are a Jew, she says, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And then the editor, John, says, for the Jews do not associate with the Samaritans. And um, you might ask yourself, why is that? Uh, what's going on that these two groups living side by side don't get along? Is it like the Palestinians and the Jews or the, the, the other groups that just have a history of, of uh, misunderstanding and animosity? Is the issue race here? Is it religion? Uh, that's a cultural question that we need to uh, answer if we're going to understand what that text means. There's a historical ba uh, boundary uh, often. Uh, listen to this verse from uh, Ru Ruth 4.9. So the guardian redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself. And he removed his sandal. And you are puzzled perhaps when you read this legal transaction, why did the man take off his sandal? What is the meaning of this action in sealing this important deal? Then there are geographical boundaries as well. What was it like for the Israelites to trek through the Sinai Peninsula? I've been in the Sinai Peninsula myself and, and I realized when I was traveling through there, there's virtually no vegetation. There's 
hardly any rainfall. The, 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 the landscape is totally barren and dry. What was it like for the Israelites? And, and do you, do you uh, uh, wonder why they sometimes murmured and, and complained? The text says that Jesus went up to Jerusalem from Galilee. Well, Galilee is in the north and Jerusalem is in the south. Why do you go up? Our orientation is maps go up, but perhaps the ancient people's orientation was topographical. You went from lower elevation to upper elevation. Or think about the distances between Lystra and Derby and Iconium and Antioch. When you look at a map, you see them just as specific dots. Uh, and today, if you were to visit those cities, as, as I have, uh, you, you connect by bus and it's relatively quick. But if you were in Paul's time and you were following Paul's journeys, you would realize the distances involved and what it takes to walk from place to place. So recall what I said earlier about the distance between us and the Bible. The Bible was originally written to someone else who lived a long time ago in another part of the world where they spoke a different language and had different cultural values.